Okay, well, this is the start of my new uh, YouTube video, and uh, hello to all my uh, YouTube subscribers. I I appreciate it, but I still have no idea why you do, <laughs> but, but I'll try not to disappoint. So, um, today's project, um, or possibly today and tomorrow, depending on what kind of time I can make for myself today, is installing a Bluetooth transmitter on my BMW K1600 GT motorcycle. Now, the um, BMW K1600 does come with a Bluetooth uh, uh, system already provided. However, there's something that's not quite right with the Bluetooth transmitter. Uh, I had the same problem on my R1200 RT BMW previously as well. It just sounds scratchy and uh, over-modulated. So you can't really turn the volume up um, because when you do, it, it immediately gets um, gets terrible sounding. So this particular uh, setup that I'm showing you right here, um, supposedly is going to help me overcome that problem. Um, what I have to do is I have to actually tap into the um, speaker leads coming out of the Alpine amplifier that's on board. And um, that's what this device here does right here. This is a Monticello audio bridge and there's a wiring diagram specifically for the K1600 which is uh, listed right here um, that shows you exactly the process for splicing these in. Uh, these right here are the posi taps so I don't have to cut any wires. I bought these on uh, Amazon. I bought this from Motocello. Is it Motocello or Montocello? Motocello I believe. Uh, this right here is a USB uh, power supply. I'm going to connect into my battery. And then I'm going to plug in the Senna SM10 Bluetooth transmitter. And then you connect this device to this device using that audio patch cable right there. And then once all that is set up and powered up, then I'm going to pair it to my Senna 20S Bluetooth receiver which clips onto my helmet and if anybody knows uh, or is familiar with this product uh, inside the helmet will be my um, my um, um, boom microphone and the speaker system and hopefully that will give me the ability to listen to my onboard BMW radio and uh, navigation system through the actual amplifier of the bike which will also allow me to use my Wonder Wheel. Um, there's another name for it that BMW gives, but basically it's a wheel on the left-hand handlebar that you can control all of your settings on your radio and your menu with. And when you're in uh, either radio mode or USB uh, MP3 mode, it, allows the, it controls the volume to the speakers, uh, which in turn would control the volume output to the headphone set. So that'd be nice to be able to regain control of that. So I'll have control of my my volume uh, independently of having to reach up all the time and uh, do it with the wheel that's on the Senna uh, 20S. Uh, there is a button on here, if you can see it. Let me turn it around. Uh, that says speaker and headphones. So when you're in the down position, that's the headphones. When you're in the up position, that's the speakers. So, in essence, when you move this switch down, uh, you would have Bluetooth only, and it would actually turn off the speakers on the bike. And when you go this direction, I'm going to assume that it turns off the speakers, um, the Bluetooth, and gives you just audio from the speakers on the bike. I don't know how often I would do that. Maybe if I'm sitting with friends somewhere and we need music to listen to, and just turn on the bike and and get it from the bike probably, but I think 90% of the time, or even 99% of the time, I'm going to leave it in the down position, because I'm always going to listen to the Bluetooth through the, the helmet setup that I have. So there you go. That's a brief rundown on what you're looking at right here. Um, uh, so far, let's see, I think this was $73. This was $140. So that's, uh, help me out here, $213. These were 20 bucks. These weren't cheap. Um, that's just, but it is what it is. So uh, that's two thirty, and I think this was twelve. So we'll say two fifty with tax and shipping for everything. Uh, to be able to listen to Bluetooth through this device from the bike, and have it sound hopefully um, um, as high end quality as what this Senna Twenty S uh, 
promises it's supposed to sound like. I know from my from my uh, directly from my phone it sounds good. The problem is when I'm on the bike wearing thick winter gloves, it's really difficult for me to change channels on my phone or change track selection. Um, and it's kind of dangerous. I mean, the, the BMW is kind of set up to use the wonder wheel and you can change channels, you can change tracks, you can up, lower the volume up and down, um, or change the volume rather, um, up and down, uh, without having to worry about pressing buttons and, and, and looking at other sc display screens. So there you go. Um, the next, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and get this set up now outside and start working on the, uh, the actual installation. I'm going to film that and we can uh, go from there as far as um, the proper way to install it. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're out at the bike and uh, I'm looking at the wiring diagram. Now here's our wiring right here um, that we're going to be connecting into. And then here right here is the actual diagram that shows the connectivity um, of the um, Motocello bridge, which color wires go to which color wire. So as you see, we've got a yellow brown, yellow red, blue brown, and blue red. So let's see what we got here. We have, uh, there's our yellow, yellow red. And... Uh, yellow brown and um, blue brown I see a blue brown here I don't know if that just pops off there or not I think it does I'll take a closer look here in a minute I see a blue and a brown, so a blue red. So I'm going to investigate these wire colors just a little bit further. So give me a second to take a look. This is my first time doing this, so we're learning together here. All right, so I got the um, I got the connector off, and from what I can tell, uh, there's a blue red, but I don't see a brown on the blue. But since the instructions say blue brown blue red and that's the only other blue there i'm going to assume that that's the would be the blue brown even though i don't really see a brown wire on it and then the red yellow and um yellow brown are above it so it looks like it looks like this connector is split into two basically so we've got the uh we've got the um the left and the right are on the left side of this modular connection which makes me wonder what the other four wires are for. Um, someone had once told me that these actually have a connection for a rear speaker output, even though there's not a set of rear speakers. And I'm wondering if that's part of this harness or not. Uh, I'm going to check into that further and report back on that. But in the meantime, if not, then we'll use these wires right here, these four I've got my thumb and finger on. Those are the four we're going to connect to, uh, based on what I'm seeing here um, on that connection. Our left and our right will be those four wires right there. Okay, so I got my posi taps on here, and it's a little unusual. So let me try to explain what I did here. Um, the yellow, red, the yellow brown, sorry, has to have two connections um, right here and right here. And the reason for that is I'm going to cut in the center, I'm actually going to clip the wire in between the two right there uh, and that allows the speaker on off button to work that I showed you in the first video uh, where, where you can select between speaker and Bluetooth if you don't disconnect that the speakers will always be on regardless of what position you have that switch set into and then I'm going to assume the blue brown would be the wire under the other brown wire the yellow brown even though it doesn't have a brown it's blue and it's another blue wire so it's got to be correct and then again i left a spot right there in order to cut in between the two right there so you can see that's why i've got four on that one set of wires and then the other two are my blue red uh, and my yellow red and those are single connections those are also the negatives as well, the minus wires. Uh, so these are the positives. So positive uh, left, positive right. Whoops, 
positive left, positive right, and then this would be basically output to the radio, positive left, positive right, and then my connection is going to be into here through the mo moto cello, out of the moto cello, back into here to finish off going to the speakers. That's kind of what this setup provides right here. It allows you to actually insert the moto cello in between these four connections right here by cutting these two cables. And then these are my grounds for my left and right speakers right there. So I set them up like that so you could actually see what's going on and it wouldn't be just a big cluster for you so you get the idea of what we're doing here. So hopefully that'll help everyone. Um, I'll leave it on there. You can always pause that and take a look as well. But so far I'm following the instructions as they are written. And uh, I took the module out to do that. It was much easier to work with. I pushed everything up from the bottom. That way all my connections will be going through the top so I can work with them better. Then I plugged the module back in when I was finished. Okay? So there you go. Again, for those of you that need some perspective on this, uh, there's the battery. I haven't hooked up the battery power yet. I'll do that when I'm done. There's the radio, and of course that'd be the back of the bike right there, so... Okay. Alright, so the next step I've done is I've taken the wiring and I've uh, stripped a little bit of the end off so it can fit down into those connectors properly. Um, the wires are tinned, which is nice, and most places don't do that. But I wasn't sure if that was actually enough to make a good contact inside that uh, connector that's on there, that twist-on connector. So I did uh, make them a little longer. I did test fit one, and it seemed to have worked quite well. I couldn't pull it out once it was on. So, um, so that's our next step. Now I did have to trim back some of the rubber cover on the Moto Cello uh, cable um, to have enough um, room to be able to connect the cables in properly without causing any kind of undue strain on them. Uh, they're all in there tight. I've been able to pull on all of them and none of them are coming out so I'm going to assume that I've got a good uh, electrical connection. I'm going to find out in a second before I clip those uh, two wires uh, for the speaker switching uh, mechanism I'm going to actually plug a set of regular um, uh, earbuds uh, into the Moto Cello device, turn the radio on and see if I get sound out of the left and right speakers. If I do uh, then that means I'm good to go. So we'll test that out here in just a second. All right, well, I've got them uh, plugged in, and I'm hearing audio from left and right channels. The Wonder Wheel works great, so I believe we have a successful installation. Uh, in fact, it sounds really good. I you guys probably can't hear that or not, but I'm happy with it. So there you go. There is the Moto Cello bridge install on a BMW K1600. Um, now the next thing to do is I'm going to clip these wires and I want to see if the um, speaker switch works. So uh, <laughs> wish me luck on that. I'll be right back. Alright, so that's with the wires clipped. Obviously I have audio. There's my speaker switch. So I want to move it now to headphones. There we go. So now that shuts the speakers off. And now, I guess I should have kept these in my ear, huh? There we go, left channel, right channel, perfect. So there we go, a successful installation. Um, I'm also going to post up this uh, snapshots of this installation as well um, with a little bit of write-up on the um, K1600 forum uh, so you can see it out there if you like. But uh, hopefully this will help the rest of you do what I just did. Um, I'm not going to worry about the um, power selection tonight or the... Um, Senna SM10. Uh, it's getting late and it's getting a little chilly out, so I'm going to hold that off for the next few days because uh, it's the middle of February and I really don't need it right now anyway. Uh, but I do have it set up. It is working properly, and that was the biggest part was getting the audio out to be able to plug it into the Bluetooth transmitter. So um, let me know if you guys need any more, uh, have any comments or suggestions, please let me know. I'm going to finish connecting this up right now on the bike and then I'm going to. Um, I'll have another part to this video uh, later on uh, that will show the Bluetooth transmitter connecting uh, and the uh, power connecting to the battery as well. So take care everybody. Thanks for watching.